Welcome to the D&D Fitness Radio Podcast, brought to you by your hosts, Don Saladino from New York City and Derek Hansen from Vancouver, Canada. Um, all right, so let's get, so I know you got a hard stop at 145. Yeah, 145. My son has a track meet at, uh, I got to, he's got to run at 1120 or our time, so. Oh, so let's, yeah, so yeah, definitely. Where you got, at, Derek? Vancouver. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's Vancouver. Right. It's it's raining. It's uh, no. It's, by the way, I love it out there, man. I'm, I do well with the women. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. So, uh, yo, when man. I was uh, I when I was in the military, I was stationed in Whidbey Island. Nice. So I was in between Seattle and, but we used to always take that hour and a half, two hour drive to Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, they're still talking about you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's just got a big smile on his face. Yeah, right you know, I, 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 um, my uh, first experience with a with a white woman was like she was like thirty eight. How old were you? Seventeen, eighteen. Oh, dang. Nice. I don't know. We supposed to be talking like this one. <laughs> I mean, it changed your life forever, man. Right? Hey, she taught me a lot of things that I didn't know. <laughs> And we are segueing now into our podcast. It's a great way to All right, so let's get no, 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 let's, no. This is this is what we do. So listen. So I so I actually initiated this podcast, right? I I I, I am really. I mean, obviously, Tone. Everyone I think watching this knows who Tone is. My best friend of eighteen years. We met at the gym at Prescriptives, right back in. Uh, was right? it Prescriptive? It was oh prescriptive yeah, 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 right. and, yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the name I, of the gym. It was called Prescriptives. Yeah, yeah. Prescriptives. Owned by, owned by Gary. Um, Just passed away. Freak, freak crazy, accident. Crazy. Gary um, Prince. Prince. Was actually ran over by a car in Miami. He was sitting and eating, and I think someone hit the gas when they were parking. And that's the story that I heard that I think he just passed away within the last probably month or month or two. So, I mean, he was, uh, he was, a, he was a good person. Yeah. But um, it's it, crazy with life. But so Tony and I met there, and I think we met the same month that I met my wife. Literally, like that's when we, which is funny because I meet the two most important people in my life the same month, which is kind of ironic, I find. But um, yeah, I would like to take credit for why they still go. <laughs> <laughs> he always has Mel's, he always has Mel's back and rightfully so. No, I no. always say if I could find a Mel, I might consider Thank settling you. down. Thank that's you. what I say. Thank you. She's Thank like you. a rare breed. Yeah, she's, she's like the opposite of Amber Heard. She's like, Oh my God, this woman is crazy. The, the, <laughs> married, the one who was married to Johnny Depp. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. This is That's another conversation. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I think Tone and I really have seen each other go through some good times. And I mean, some of the darkest times I've, I've had in my life. I think Tone has been there for, but you know, the, the losing people and, you know, my, uh, my brother-in-law dying in a car accident and, you know, losing my head trainer and one of my best friends, our training partner, Tommy, and, you know, just witnessing, you know, people getting sick, people coming and going, you know, almost even losing my business several times. And, you know, you go through, when you go through a lot of highs and lows with people, um, and, and Tone was always the one person in my life that I think came to me with this, um, with, with, with an unbiased opinion, right? Like you go to mom, mom's gonna, you know, you're always mom's boy. She's always gonna say something or she'll, she'll give you an honest opinion. But Tone was the one guy, a person in my life that wouldn't um, have a problem telling me if, you know, when I was wrong or why. Oh, I you provide some examples. Like Tone, when have you really Wait, stepped up? Would you up? like for me to tell you the real story? Yeah, I <laughs> tell uh, tell so, us when you told him what time it is. Oh, so so how me and Don met was like I I I would uh be in the gym by myself. I was I always have this towel on my head. Um, I, I'm not homophobic, but it was like a lot of gay people in there. So I I don't keep that. I I wanted to stay focused, right? So I needed a spot. So one day I'm looking around to ask my wife for a spot, and I seen I'm like, let me ask him. So I was like, yo. You, you got a minute, give me a spot. He said, sure, 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 sure. You, you were that polite spot. about it? I think so. I thought you just said, yo, man, I need a spot. No. I was like, yo, can you, <laughs> no, nah, oh, no. So he's like, yo, if you need another spot, yo, whatever. So I did need another spot. And then I had this weight belt on. So he's like, yo, why you got that weight belt on? I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you talking about? I was doing about? bicep curls with a- No, I was doing bench, bro. 
whatever. I was doing. It. He's like, he's like, yo, why? I was like, yo, I, I, I said, cause my back, my back, is, I got a bad back. So he's like, yo, your back is, your back is weak, cause your core, your core is all this healing and all this. Uh, Went into that right away. Right away. I'm wow. telling you. So then, you know, I, I, me, I want to learn. So I just like, I, I said, let me be open minded, cause I think a closed mind can't grasp a good thought. So I listened to him, and um, we just became yo, and then yo. Well, when you in there, you know, we started ranging how we was going to uh, work out together. And I would say, for me, as we starting to figure it out, we start talking to each other and I started seeing who he was and where he come from. And he and then he was seeing who I was and where I come from. And in my mind, I wanted I made it my business to work out with him because I was trying to see different things in the world. Like I was tired of growing up in the urban scene, the things that I've been doing, going through. I wanted to like see what other people, how other people would live in and how they do things or whatever. So I had a purpose for wanting to always work out with him. And then I think he found a purpose for wanting to work out with me. And then we used to be talk. He don't like when I say this, but like when I met him, he used to go see a psychiatrist. I don't mind you saying that. Oh. Uh, and I, 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 huh? I used to, yeah, I used to, I used to go, I used to go to a therapist once a week. Yeah, hell yeah. I'd love, I think it was the best money I ever spent, to be honest with you. And then, you know, me and him, he didn't, he didn't feel like he needed no more, right? So now, I don't know this. He's been going home talking to his parents about me, right? So when I eventually meet his parents, his mom go, Tom, take care of my son. I'm like, and I'm not, I didn't do that in her face, but I was like, I don't know why she said that. But then... I, I started, you know, we, I started getting it because I felt like I didn't know at the time he was, what he was doing with psychiatry stop or whatever. But I think as him going home, he was showing more growth as being on his own in the city, dealing with the challenges. So I felt like he was getting growth from me talking to like my experiences is how I go, how I go about things. And I was getting growth for him because I was looking for like to learn how people really build futures. I was going to say, you guys are, are, there's a significant age difference. Like you guys aren't the same age and you aren't from the same oh. generation, right? Oh, I'm, I'm what, I got 15 on you? You're 60 and I'm 45, yeah. So like big brother. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I would say it's coming. Like and I would say like, yo, I, I think God, you know, when I started feeling like I wanted to change my life from without my what I was dealing and how I was going through life and I wanted to do better. In order to do better, you gotta know better. In order to know better, you gotta be around people who could teach you. So I started wanting I wanted to do better, man. Like I wanted to be around shit and I just wanted to learn and see, you know, just you know, just learn how people really are working hard and, and doing things to build real futures and taking their time. Instead of like, I grew up fast paced, fast money, crash burn, you know, that's my world. So is, was, was there one specific uh, time when you're like, you had to step in and you had to tell Don like, hey, you got to straighten this out or you got to. Let's say like a thousand. <laughs> don't make it sound like you're some angel here also, man. It's like, come on. But I, I don't get in trouble. That's the difference between me and him. You want to know what that means, right? He's trouble. No, that means that whatever I do, angel or not, I don't, I, I, I don't know nobody. But. Yeah, what he means is no. <laughs> he he means he was talking about being free the other day and and, and like, not uh, yeah, not, like, not, you know, not being held accountable. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I think we all evolve, right? I mean, I think you look at me right now at forty five and me at twenty five. I mean, there's two different people. I would have. By the way, there's people at your age right now that still ain't getting it. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So for me, I feel like growth is what we make mistakes. We go through things we learn, but it, to me is I can't see people continue to make the same mistakes. Like then I can't feel sorry for you. But if you make a mistake and you learn from it, you know, it's, that's part of growth. You, we all going to make mistakes. Like I'm pretty sure I got more mistakes to make at my age or whatever, but I'm trying to avoid as many mistakes as I can make. Cause I think mistakes sometimes for the most part are painful. But how do you do that when you, you got to take risks still too, right? You still take risks or you, you're not cautious. You're just. I, listen, I take risks. I calculate my risks now before I just be risky. 
Now it's like if I'm taking a risk, I'm I'm see here's the thing, right? Regardless of what kind of risk you gotta take, you gotta set responsibility for to even deciding to take a risk. You have to already, whether it's a good risk, a bad risk, whether it's about making a lot of money or whatever, you have to be in acceptance to understand that this could go bad. And if you don't have that in you, then you, you're not really built for taking risk. You should just go get a nine to five, know exactly what you're going to get, exactly when you're going to go to work, exactly when you're going to come home, all that, because you ain't taking no risk now. You, are, you, you know what you're doing. When you when you trying to build a, a company or whatever you're trying to do, like yo, you don't you don't know what you don't know what lies ahead. You just don't. You know, whether you're doing it legal or illegal, you just don't know what the world, you know, we it's a risk. That's a big problem. I mean, I, I see that out there too. People want to point the finger and they wanna like I can like I used to have some coaches that worked for me and they were like, Well, if you know, if I was running it, I would have done this. And I'm like, well, then go run it, right? Like you, like you don't, you're not my situation. You don't have to make the decisions that I've made in my life, or you don't have to make the decisions I'm making now. You don't really know the full story. And that's why I've really tried to do a better job personally and not passing judgment on people before I, you know, get the full story. You know, walking into a gym, you see a coach training someone, Derek, you know what I'm talking about? And you're like, why are they having them bench press the last four days in a row? You don't know the full story, right? Like, Maybe when I was 23, I would have been like, that, that coach sucks. Like, it's why does he have him doing the same stuff all this every single time? Like, they're just talking. Like, you don't know the full story. And I feel like as you get older and you get more and more mature and you go through these, you know, having to make these business decisions, which for me were really tough and for him were really tough as well. Like, it wasn't, you know, you learn and then you pivot and you make, you know, you start realizing the decisions that you need to make moving forward, you know? Yeah, this is a question for both of you. Knowing where you are now and what you went through, and assuming you're quite happy with where you are now, if you know, people always ask, like, if you go back when you were young and change something, what would you do differently? Would you guys do anything differently? Well, I want to hear Tone's answer here first. I, I feel like um, I've been asked that question, and obviously, you made you you want the mistakes that you made. You want to do them differently, right? But I feel like the mistakes I made made me who I am. So in my mind, this, I've been through a lot. I can't actually say I want to go through that again. <laughs> but I would say it, it helped and allow me to understand more about life, me, just, you know, like things that I'm doing, what I shouldn't be doing, what I'm not paying attention to, what the things I'm taking for granted. I'm, I can't say like if I didn't make all the mistakes I made that I would get, I would, I would be who I am today. True. Don? Yeah, I don't want to, I mean, I used to hear that line, well, if I can go back and do it again, I don't want to go back and do it again, right? Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, I'm very happy where I'm at. Like, I love that my kid, like, my daughter's 14, my son's 13. Like, my wife and I are, you know, been building a business over the last couple of years. Like, it's tough, but it's fun. And it's, and it's, um, it's a new challenge. Like, I don't want to go and I don't want to jump ahead five years and I sure as hell don't want to jump back five years. You know, I don't want to go back to drive the mistakes I made were the mistakes I made. I, I think that, you know, making those m mistakes with business or life in general, I think that's what, you know, is enabling me to stay grounded now and be in the position that I'm in. And um, is the reason why on a Saturday night, I just enjoy being home watching movies with them or hanging out or doing my thing. I just, I don't need that. You know, I think my needs when I was 24 25 are way different than my needs now i can't even like even going out one one night like it gives me a bit of anxiety it's just it's just not important to me anymore so yeah i think right now i'm, I'm very present and i'm where i want to be and um, the mistakes i made in business or in life it's just you know i can't I, I can't even look back at that and say oh i wish i did it differently like what's done is done i learned from it i move forward and uh, yeah but but let me just say this d about mistakes right Okay, so let's just say you met somebody who never made a mistake, right? And then he have kids or she have kids, right? That's, that's no guarantee that the kids ain't going to make mistakes, right? So if you never made a mistake and they making mistakes, how do you teach them? What are you going to tell them? I never made a mistake and they make a mistake. Yeah, 100%. So I, I would say mistakes is, is, is part of teaching. 
Like it just is. Like you know, life. Like they, they, they're like they say, life teaches and reality bites. It's just, it's, it, it, if you really listen to what I just said, it is what it is. Life, life ain't. Do you think about all the successful people in the world? If they didn't make the mistakes to understand how to do better for Facebook or blah blah blah, they ain't gonna be who they are. Like you, mistakes is like people need to learn how to embrace mistakes. If you can't embrace mistakes or you can't, uh, you let the mis uh, you let mistakes get the best of you, whether you cheated on somebody or whatever, like you still got to learn. Like if you know as a grown ass person, let's say you was married and you go cheat on your significant other, right? Whatever. And you make a mistake and the person don't want to give you a chance. Yo, you have to learn from that. You can't force the person to give you another chance. You shouldn't feel like they want, if they want to give you another chance, I think that's cool. And then hopefully you don't do it again because they get, they respect and that you made a mistake and they want to give you another chance. But that's the whole thing about, so if you make a mistake again and again, and again, why would it, this is, this is, this is where you ain't really making mistakes. You just made a conscious decision to go out there and do something. And then when you get caught, you want to make <laughs> excuses. If I get, if I get, if I get caught jumping the turnstile and the judge being like, yo, you know what? This is your first time. I'm going to give you a chance. And then I go do it again. What do you think the judge should do to me? Yeah, he shouldn't give you no. You <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's about. Yeah, that means I didn't learn. Right. <laughs> right. But that's why I think, you know, this pivot to you doing this movie, I think is really interesting, right? I mean, this is something that, you know, you have managed artists in the past when you came to me nine years ago and you said you were, we're going to be working on this. Yeah, I didn't want to do music. Like, I, I would just say, like, how I got to this point where I'm on your platform, I did it. And you know what? I've been working on this project for 10 years and he, you know, he's seen it, but I don't talk. Like I be around, you know, like, you know, I don't, you know, he, he you know, you know, he trained a lot of significant people or whatever, right? And uh, I be around him, but in my mind, I don't talk because to me, I understand a lot of things. This is about like really paying attention. When you want to do something, you can't just expect for people to, believe in you, jump in the bed with you or nothing. You have to somehow prove to somebody that you are serious about it or you know what you're doing. So I feel like <laughs> I ain't do a lot of talking. I would talk to him about, I got this movie. And by the way, if, if a person asked me, I wouldn't take myself serious if I said I'm shooting a movie because I never did it before. So you're not supposed to take me serious, but I was dead serious. And to the point where it is, I know like, what I'm doing and the level that me and my, my friend that wrote the book and everything, you know, people like your tone, I don't know what's going to happen with your movie, but there's a lot of people that have been doing this for years has never got to this point. So for me, it was always like, when I, when I, when I, when I say I'm going to do something, I stay committed to it. A lot of time people bail out of their commitment to what you want to do. It's like, if you want to get married, you need to understand what those vows mean. If you don't think you can handle it, you should get married. So if a person told me, yo, Tom, this movie is going to take you 10 years and you would probably be in the seven figures to get it done. Most people are going to say no. I probably would say no because, but that's not what it is. It's, it's the journey now. And I started seeing purpose in it. Like for me, I used to be a person that could always manage how to make some money, but I never had purpose. So now I have a purpose to make some money by making movies. Can you go into some detail about the movie? So the movie is about a Jamaican immigrant who in his country, he's already like being, he's seeing things that is, is, is influencing his mind, which is a jokes with what the movie is about. So when he comes to the United States to pursue the American dream, he goes to high school, goes to the military, he come home and he finds out that his mom got cancer. He tried to take on odds and end jobs to do the right thing because this is, he's in a new environment. He's not around no negative. He went to school. His mom is trying to raise him to be the right way. Because times are hard, right? It doesn't matter how good your parents do. When you go out into the world, you don't know what the world is going to offer you. He started realizing that if he was going to take care of his parents, I mean, his moms, and, and trigger out how to take care of himself with everything, being doing, getting a regular job ain't going to do it. 
get, doing, getting a regular getting a regular job wasn't going to cut it. So if you think about when he was growing up in his country, mm -hmm. there were things he knew how to do to get money. So, you know, he has an antagonist in the movie that triggers this thought. And once he just say, oh, my mom got cancer. I got to do what I got to do. I'm tired of people playing with me or whatever. He takes this life on of jokes is when you rob somebody for something. So that become his life. But the part, the other part to that is, is like, okay, let's just say your, your parents, you're going to do whatever it is for your loved ones, right? Now you getting money. You did it to take care of your loved ones and just do good. But the money is coming. So now you, it's not about your moms no more. It's about you having the fancy cars, you know, spending money on watches, jewelry, you know, going to clubs, strip clubs. So at this point in time, the focus on doing it to survive become more on a focus on you chasing this money that at the end of the day, you not, it's not, you know, you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. So a lot of time in my culture, this is how we crash and burn. So if you think about it, a lot of times people don't understand, like in the urban world, we would just, we, everybody was born on an even scale. You was born, you didn't know what you were going to do. Your mom's raised, I didn't know, right? At some point in time, your environment start influencing your behavior. So if you, a lot of times people don't understand how people join gangs, uh, sell drugs, rob banks, <laughs> whatever. But you, a lot of times we all are a product of our environment. If you think about how you was growing up, there's a lot of things and you was growing up that whatever they were doing to make you who you are influenced you. And you started shaping who you want to be based on the things you've seen and you liked and you didn't like. But sometimes in, in, in where, how I was growing up, it's nothing but negative <laughs> stuff all the time. So it's hard to overcome and, and be able to do what I'm doing. Like I've been through all the negative stuff possible but my point is, is to being like, yo, you know what? If you start, just stop trying to figure out how to cheat or uh, angles or whatever, and just work hard, just work hard and believe in something, then maybe you could get, like, I hope the movie do well, but maybe you could get to that point where is you could see that hard works overcomes a scheme. Yeah. I mean, did you have any positive influences where you're like okay i'm glad i had that like i was talking to a friend of mine and we we're talking about how we we're so involved in sports when we were young that it kind of kept us busy kept us out of trouble did you have anything like that i had one his name was fred lewis he was like a, kind of a pro basketball player but i love the way he lived he used to live in my where i grew up and he's like a bachelor he was the one that made me always want to be a bachelor like y'all he was chilling like you know what i'm saying but <clears throat> once again my environment started driving my thoughts i'm not around this man all he's he's you know what i'm saying like he he took a liking to me but i wasn't around him enough to be more influenced by him than my environment so my environment my environment started being more of what i was attracted to than him but as far as influ as the people that influence me i'm always influenced by people who successful like, you know, like I, I could see Don came from a successful family and he's around, there's a lot of success going on the right way. And I was like, oh, that, I like that. Like I'm, I'm influenced by that. So I want to be around people and I just want to just see how they do it. And like, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't trying to see a lot of times, like in his world, he is hard because everybody wanted, like, like, I don't want to name drop who he trained, but everybody, oh, you know, and, and for me, it's like, he know me, like, I don't care. When I walk in that gym, I don't, I don't see none of that. Never, ever. And they know it. And I think that's why they don't have a problem with me because they could feel like I'm not, I don't, listen, I'm my own person, man. <laughs> Yo, whatever you doing, whoever you are, that can't pay my bills. Yeah, I, I, I also think that's probably a, a reason why, you know, I got along with them well also is, is and, and you've seen it, it was, your behavior doesn't change when you're around certain people. And I, I, and I feel bad. Like I, you know, sometimes you're with these people that you see on the big screen and like individuals on the street just can't give them a break. They're like, Oh, can I get a picture? You know, you know, someone I'm, I'm out at lunch with a, a well-known name um, in the last couple months. And 
the guy's literally taking a bite out of his lunch, it's a piece of fish. And someone's like coming over with a camera. He's like, dude, I'm eating. Like, and he's the nicest human being, but like, where is the filter? Like, I don't really understand, you know, and, and, and then you start wondering why, you know, a lot of these celebrities go out and they're, and they're in their shells and they've got their hats on, their glasses on. They just want, they want an hour, they want a piece of normalcy. You know what I'm saying? So I think when they start getting around people like us, especially in the environment drive, it was a very safe place for them to be able to go in and not actually worry about, you know, um, you know, you know, if someone had a camera or was holding a camera low. Like I used to have the post call up, be like, so and so training there, and I'd be like, really? I wish they were training here. Like send them my way. They would like hang up on me because they think I was some goofball, and then like that individual would be like on the treadmill walking. Like I just, I, I didn't care. Like when I was working with Hugh Jackman, he was trying to do PR for for me at a time where there was no social media. I didn't care. I'm like, no, Hugh, just 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 train and just let's worry about you and then that was the attitude and i think that's what tone's talking about right now okay, yo could we can i tell him the story about uh what's this dude name i'll just say what i was saying today you remember that time i came in and the dude was like who's this guy in the oh game? yeah don't mention his name but then i had words with him after that <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i'll tell he's him. a big actor yeah like, i don't... a huge actor and this dude kept and I'm like, yo, I leave you done. Like, yo, I, I'm gonna leave, yo, because I don't. This dude. This right guy here, came up to him. It was like, it was actually really rude. He's like, yo, what are you doing here? And Tone's <laughs> like, I'll never for, forget this. Tone's like, I'm, I'm a member here. He's like, you're a member here. And then, oh, this was the actor that came up to Tone. The actor came up to Tone saying that. First off, he's yeah, not he's like, up there, up he's there. not like a fit guy. Like he would get Tone would kick his ass if he if he was a, uh, you know, if, it if, wasn't if, even if, about that. It, it wasn't was about, about that. I'm t I'm keeping it real. He looked at me at the black dude. He know if I was what my purpose for being in there. He felt like somebody was like knew where he was and somebody. And I'm like, and I'm looking at this. I'm like, yo, my man, listen, you. I get why you feel that way, but you confused right now. Yeah. And then I went up to him and I was like, I went up to him and I'm like, like you just all the way confused by right, right, right now. I don't really care about you, B. And then I went up to him and I verbatim said, Hey, call him, call him by his name. What the fuck are you doing? And he was like, what, what, what? I'm like, that's like my best friend. And my training partner. I mean, this is probably, you know, five, six years ago, right? Probably. So at that time we were training together 12 years. I mean, my, my wife let him, but Uncle Tone picked my kids up from school. I mean, that's the type of relationship. He spends Christmas, Thanksgiving. We were just, we're all family. And then he realized he messed up and obviously apologized and then got cool. But, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know what goes through people's heads sometimes. And then, and, and then like with me, right? And they notice, like, I have a, I have a Instagram. I don't use it. He knows it. I don't do nothing with it. They send me everything, tag me or everything. I could see all the celebrities that we took pictures with in the gym and all this. Even one of the guys got the same birthday as me. We did a video. It got like probably a hundred, like a, a million, a million and a half views. And he, and I promised him that I would post it. I didn't post it. So my thing is like, cause I don't really care about that stuff. Like I really, I don't, I'm not, you know, I, 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 I'm a little older. So I think at some point in time, everybody should get not care about that stuff, but I never really cared about it. You know, I always, always cared about like coming to the gym, working out, working out with him. Cause me and him have like a, a chemistry where we feed off of each other and we need that to start our day. But you have a movie that you're, I don't know what stage of production it's in, but it's done. It's coming out May tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. Coming out tomorrow. May 6th is the premiere. We're all going into the city. Okay. So and do you feel responsibility to promote this on social media? You know, because I, I think... We're talking about ourselves right now instead of me. Like, no, but I, I think, listen, at the, my movie. At, the, at the end of the day, this is, a, this is a story. I mean, this is... Tone broke down what the actual movie is about. I think this is also... For me, like, I saw the movie. I think it's fantastic. I, I think it's fantastic. It's dramatic. It makes you feel, makes you a little sick at times. I mean, it's a real movie. Um, but I, for me, the movie is phenomenal. I think the story of how it was put together, you got to do a movie on that. Because the person, one of the people that helped, obviously helped orchestrate it and what he went through and all the ups and downs. And I get admired by people. Like I'll tell you why I'm drawn to him, right? besides him being a great training partner, but I'm admired by people 
who have gotten literally kicked in the face over and over and just keep fighting, right? It's like that lock, it's that Rocky line, you know, when, when, Apollo, when Apollo's trainer looked at him and said, he ain't right for us, baby. <laughs> he goes, I saw you beat that man like I've never seen a man get beat and the man kept coming after you. And that was when they were trying to choose like, who, who is he gonna go? Is he gonna go fight uh, Rocky again? And that to me, that's what I'm drawn by because you know I've been around people with a lot of money you know, because of the business that I'm in. And, you know, I've seen people who, who found a level of success. I'm more interested in hearing, what did you have to get through to get there? Like the fact that you got $5 billion sitting in your bank account, that's amazing. But like, was it smooth sailing the whole way? No, man. Like having conversations with guys like Joel Horowitz, the founder of Tommy Hilfiger, uh, Calvin Klein, you know, Calvin telling me stories about him walking on the beach, wondering if, you know, if, you know, if he's even going to be able to feed his daughter at the time, you know, when he's really young or, or, or Joel, you know, literally sleeping, you know, underneath a desk for two years and having to travel all over the world. And, you know, you hear all these stories and that to me is what I find is remarkable. So Tone's story right now, the movie is phenomenal, but I think it's also a story about someone who's, you know, you know, in a way been given a second chance in life or a third chance or a fourth chance or someone that just keeps coming at you after all of these things because i'm really like i know a lot like i know a lot about this guy throughout 18 years you know he's not someone to turn around and throw all those cards out on the table but you know if there's 52 cards in the deck you know i'm getting a card here i'm getting a card there and then you start putting together this life story of what this guy went through and to me that's what i'm drawn to and that's what's impressive so I, for him to sue hold on for him to be going to that premiere tomorrow where the, we, we want the movie to do well, obviously. And I'm, and I'm praying it kills it and he can do another dozen movies like it. But for me tomorrow, this is a milestone in his life because this is like, all right, man, like I said I was going to do it. I had everything working against me and we got this phase one done. Phase one, that is. I'm not saying you're going to be sitting there victorious. You know, you know what I mean? I think I, I would just say, Derek, like I, I think for me, it's all about belief. But the belief is not what people believe in me is what I believe in myself. Cause a lot of times uh, I feel like when people see people believe in them, they use that energy, right? But those are the same people, they, they, they might be like, nah, you, you ain't that it is. And then you can't handle it because the people that would believe in you don't believe in you no more. So for me, I don't rely on, I don't rely on who believe in me, I just stay, consistent in believing in, I don't really care. I just believe in myself. At the end of the day, I always feel like this. You, you it doesn't matter what you create when you're in the world, but there's two ways you came in. I mean, two ways you, you, uh, you came in by yourself, you leave by yourself. Mm. That's just it. I don't care what nobody say. What legacy or what, whatever you do in the process, that's cool. But once you leave, you leave. Once you come in, you come in. So for me, it's like, I, I, I can't really sit up here in no situation, not just positive, whatever it is. I have to, I have to internally let, allow myself to figure this out. Because a lot of times people are needy. They need to hear a positive influence. That's, I, 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 no, I, don't, I'm not, I don't have nothing, but I don't have nothing to get people going to church. But people go to church to hear the word. They feel like that word is actually making them feel like they can overcome things. The problem is you ain't really listening to the word because you'll still go out there and you'll do exactly a bunch of the stuff that the God, the God says you ain't supposed to do. So you just want to hear it to make you feel good, but you still going to go out and do shit, something that you shouldn't do. Because we, we all sinners. So I don't know. Every, every, I think everybody who go to church on a Sunday sins on a Monday somehow I think I think most people because and there's nothing wrong with no, it because no, 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 God no hold on because God is, uh, he's already accepted us for us this is what I no, don't know no then that's true well, huh? that's, that's what I believe yeah. he, he we all who we are he, he accepted everybody even the worst people in the world he what are you talking about he's he accepted all of us he, he know all of us ain't going to be the, the person that's going to sit up there and listen to the word but sometimes you don't you don't get the word through those type of people you could get the word through somebody like me so now i'm interested what is the movie called because we haven't we haven't uh, gone into that and then where can you see it because uh you know people are going to want to see this it's called respect the jokes 
It's going to be on all platforms of demand. You could pre-order it as of today until tomorrow on Apple TV. After that, whatever stream demand, like I got the list. Uh, I have the list here, right? But the list is like about 10 other demand channels on TV. Wow. Yeah. So we could tie in some links. I, you know, we're going to tie in some information. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll get, I'll get this episode out right away. Yeah. See, look, you can see. Oh, let me see. Wow. I sent it to Don, but those are all so, the links on demand. I think, you know what I'd like to do? D, I'd like to, um, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to see it again tomorrow night. But once you see it, I'd like to do a little, little, not a review, but we can kind of do a little recap on it and not, you know, we don't want to give away the story. We want people to go see it, but you know, is I there a trailer cool. too that we can oh, distribute? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got all of, but yeah. hold on, listen, we're doing a campaign. Let me just say this. So once the movie come out tomorrow, we're we doing a campaign. We're going, the campaign is going to be, well, why keep you, why it's like you sitting at home, like, I keep seeing this thing about respect the chips. Why are people talking about it? And then you go, hey, like somebody significant goes and buy it. And oh, that was dope or whatever. So like, let's just say like, I, like my, like a friend, like Amon, like DJ Khaled, he was just being like, man, I, I want to see what's up with this respect the chips. People keep talking about it or somebody like yourself. And then you record it and then you post it on your page, whatever you do. And then you, the next day you probably being like, oh, you know what? I wasn't expecting this, you know, I don't really watch urban movies, but it was all right, or I hated it or whatever. So the campaign is going to be, let me see what this Respect the Jips movie is about. So people, you know, could go watch it. <laughs> yeah, and, and let's say, I mean, do you have a, a sort of a plan around where you go from here? Like you went through this experience of putting this together and- This is my purpose now. I, I just said earlier, like my, I never, I, I've always found a way to make money with no purpose. So my purpose to make money is to continue to make movies. Like I want to make, but I want to make authentic urban movies, meaning I want to educate people on how we, us. Because a lot of times I feel like if you watch a lot of urban movies today, they glorify the drugs, the guns, the just messing with the chicks, buying the jewelry. And, it, and you got to think about it. That's not how we grew up. We ain't grew up to be destructive. So it's all right to get into how they made money and they celebrate, but you got to get into where was they at when you decided that you're going to take this type of life on, regardless if you're successful or not. And I feel like nobody, no, nobody shows that. That's what I, I feel like that's a, that's a big missing part of how in society, we, we, you know, as cultures, we, we just don't understand each other. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, yeah, let's, let's do a recap on it. All right, you want to? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yo, check, go check it out, man. You know, post that up. Rob's gonna send. Rob's gonna send the trailer over to you. I'll touch base with you later. All right, D. You'll be able yeah, to watch no. it tomorrow, though, man. So you know. So it premieres tomorrow. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'll tomorrow, make sure I get it. All platforms of demand. We it's going to be in Cinema Village, on. Uh, Second Avenue and 12th Street. It's kind of like a private. It's like a private. Private situation. viewing. We'll, we'll all be there though. But that must have been a quite a an experience of going through, obviously writing, and then getting into the production and getting people on board and getting it, investors and all that. Like I would like to hear about that too. Like that must have been quite a education. Yeah. Let's. Well, we could talk about that. Hopefully, we have more to talk about after you watch it. Yeah. 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 Maybe let's, you have more things you would like to say to me because I know like uh let's <laughs> let's 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 redo this in a week or two. We'll bring Tone in after a workout, we'll talk about it, we'll have this first episode out. Hopefully it piques everyone's interest, then we'll bring him back in and we'll see how the response was. We could all talk about the film a little bit. Yeah. All right. I would like that. All right, brother. I, Thanks, guys. I appreciate uh you having me on your platform with John, you know. Um yeah, um hopefully. We could talk again, man. Yeah, hopefully this is a regular thing. If you want me to teach you about training, I could do that too, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got, I got my old weight belt here from like 35 yeah. years ago, so yeah. we can try that on. So you know, yeah. Another. Let me just say this: like one thing about me and Don when when he, when it comes to like like being determined, like we don't believe that we can't do something. So like a lot of times. I can I already know like the weight he can't lift. 
And just because I said it. The way I can't lift? What do you mean? That you can't lift. Yeah, I know the weight you can't lift. So it's, sometimes he gets to that and he feels like just because I said that, he got to prove to me that he can lift it. And then you know what I say? Stop cheating yourself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't even talk to me about work ethic here. <laughs> That's one area you don't have to talk no, to. No, no, I could talk to him because you know what he does? He work out with you and all of y'all. And I'm like, yo, bro, push yourself. Like, stop. Like, he wanted, he wanted to do the cheesy workouts. I'm like, yo, if you what are you work talking out, about? <laughs> now he's, now he's, now nah, this nah. is like, this nah. is over. <clears throat> This is over. All right, well, it could be over, but I'm, this I, is over. It's been many a times I've seen you work out, and I oh my you god, out, oh my god! You know, talk about calling out, right? Calling out the guy's on his phone today during sets, chest press, and talk with yeah, people. Yeah, but he know my body. Yeah, I'm working on my movie. He knows that. Yo, he knows when I come to the gym, that's warfare. I ain't got no yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. He knows this. Yeah. Yo, he he he. You he, know what? You know he what? He worked out with people who like to talk. And he I like, don't. Do I like and drive? He used to have a group, five, six. I'm like, I'm on him my and own. I get along. I go well. in the gym, work out by oh myself. My I'm not you doing know what? All that. You know what? Listen, him and I work out well together. You know why? Because we don't talk. Yeah, but he want to invite the world to come work out with us now. No, I don't. You do too, bro. <laughs> Ross works out with us. No, I'm talking about before when you had drive. Literally, I come to the gym. It, oh yeah, they're gonna be working out with us. I'm like, all right. Once I see they start doing too much talking, D, I'm, I check. Yeah, it out. some of them, honestly, some of them did yap a little bit. I would just yell at them, and I see I could shut it off and just do my set. He gets annoyed and he walks off. Nah, so no, because you be talking with them. No, stop it. Okay. Thank well, you. next time I'm there, I, next Thank I'm you, gonna bro. film you guys working out and interacting so that everybody can see this dynamic. So. By the way, we are the original Jim Mock. We are the original Jim Mock. This is yeah. Hey. See you later, Dick. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you, bro.